Hello and welcome back to Bamboo Batu. Today we are talking about a hot topic in bamboo once again. Bamboo for oxygen and CO2 sequestration. It's one of our favorite words to say here in the uh, eco-activist uh, community. Sequestration. And if you love learning about bamboo, definitely check out my website, B-A-M-B-U-B-A-T-U.com, bamboobatu.com. You can also subscribe to the channel. That would be great. So bamboo is amazing for generating, generating oxygen and sequestering carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which makes it a super critical tool in the, uh, in the effort to combat and mitigate climate change. So it's super interesting. People are talking about it a lot. There's a lot of information out there on the internet already, but we're going to go over it briefly here just to summarize what is so important about bamboo. You may have heard forests being referred to as the lungs of our planet. Uh, and the photograph here, this is actually a forest of bamboo in the background. I believe that's a photo from Cambodia, massive bamboo forest there generating lots and lots of oxygen. So the lungs of a human being, as you may know, inhale oxygen or they inhale air from the atmosphere and they select out the oxygen to take into the lungs and they release the CO2, which is basically the opposite of what the plants and trees do. It's so convenient the way nature works that way. And I love it. It's just perfect. It's like, yeah, it's, coincidence or master plan. I don't know, but it's amazing. So this is what photosynthesis looks like, which is doing the opposite of what our lungs do. The tree, as you see here, inhales these little gray bubbles of carbon dioxide and releases these little blue bubbles of oxygen. Keep in mind, this is just a learning tool here. Uh, CO2 doesn't actually appear in that color or in that size or shape for that matter, but that's just basically how it works. Photosynthesis uh, a very important part of life on earth. And so that's the science behind it. Uh, we like to rely on science. Some people might consider it just to be a theory like climate change, the theory of photosynthesis, but most of us are pretty convinced that climate change is real. And so is photosynthesis. This is how plants and trees get their food. They take sunlight, they use the CO2 and water. They turn sunlight into sugar, which is food, and they release oxygen as a byproduct. Oxygen being super important to humans and other animals, as we already explained. So what's so great about bamboo in this context? Bamboo grows faster than trees, grows faster than pretty much any woody plant on earth. And because it's growing fast, that is equivalent to, uh, it basically has a very high metabolism. And as it's metabolizing, that means it is sucking up more CO2 and emitting more oxygen, which is a great thing. And the thing about bamboo, you see that picture there, the bamboo, this species of bamboo, which appears to be Moso bamboo from China. Um, the poles, the bamboo gets about close to a hundred feet tall. Um, maybe it only gets to 60 or 80 feet tall. It depends on conditions and specific poles, but anyway, it gets huge. It gets as tall as some trees. And the thing about it is it gets that tall in a single growing season. That's like two months worth of growth right there. Um, it shoots, it starts uh, coming up out of the ground in the springtime and it just shoots up like a rocket and it reaches its full height in, in the course of the growing season, which is going to be about two months, could be three months, depends on the weather, the location, climate, soil, et cetera, et cetera, species and so on, but usually about two, two, maybe three months at the most to reach that full height. Unlike trees, trees, as you probably know, they sprout from a seed. They start to grow an inch or two. The following year, they grow another few inches. The following year, a few more inches. Year after year after year, uh, eventually after 20 or 30 or 50 years, you have a big tall tree that's uh, 20 or 30 or 40 meters tall. But uh, it's not like that. 
with bamboo. Bamboo just goes super fast. And as it does that, it is generating oxygen. So it's incredible. Um, survey says 35% more oxygen than trees. That's the number that's constantly repeated and quoted on the internet. And like most um, statistics, it's not 100% reliable, but it is pretty close. Um, the fact is when you're trying to measure these things, uh, the carbon sequestration properties and oxygen producing properties of a plant, um, you have to settle on a number, I guess, apparently, eventually you just settle on the number and 35 is the number we've settled on. Although that can vary pretty widely again, depending on climate species, weather, soil type, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, uh, it's pretty reasonable to say between 20 and 40% more oxygen than trees, which is crucial because we need more oxygen because this is what's going on with climate change. This is another scientific theory along with, along with photosynthesis, uh, the theory of climate change. Um, this is a chart, which I made, um, using my tremendous graphic design skills. Um, but yeah, I tried to keep it simple and clear. There's that little friendly bubble of oxygen on the left and that nasty bubble of CO2 on the right. And the chart is showing the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere over the last 120 something years. So before the industrial revolution, the age of industry, so going back, uh, say 1800 or 1850, somewhere around there, uh, CO2 levels in the atmosphere were about 280 parts per million. And most scientists say that 350 parts per million is about the upper limit of safe levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. So we passed that in around 1986. Um, as you can see, um, this is not hundred percent accurate on the way I drew the graph here, but pretty much it was pretty level for a while. And then all of a sudden it went around the middle of the 20th century. Um, it just took off. It shot up like a bamboo shoot in the springtime. Um, but not in a good way. So around 1986, we passed that level 350 parts per million and did not look back. And now in the year 2023, when I'm recording this video, uh, levels are at about 419, maybe 420 parts per million, according to the vast majority of the members of the scientific community. That is, um, I got these statistics from a place called NASA. They're pretty reliable, but yeah, I mean, if you believe in the whole moon landing business, uh, that's up to you. But anyway, the, the rate of CO2 in the atmosphere is just out of control. So what do you do about that? There's a couple of things you can do. And if you know me, you know that when I'm given a choice of a couple different things to do, I choose to do both because I'm crazy like that. So yeah, panic first and foremost, just freak out, just lose your mind because it's scary. It's super scary. I mean, just look around. The world is scary. So panic if you have to. Then take a deep breath and look for a solution. Try to be solution oriented. Go organic. Um, the organic solution to this problem would be to plant a whole bunch of bamboo because bamboo is really good at sucking up that CO2 out of the atmosphere. And trees, trees are good too. I'm not here to speak against the trees. I'm a big fan of trees. As a matter of fact, I was just out the other day and I gave a tree a big hug and we both enjoyed it. But, uh, bamboo is just the most effective carbon sequestering plant out there. Uh, one more fun fact about bamboo and its carbon sequestration properties. Um, when you cut down a tree, if you're building a house or building a ship or building some, uh, wooden toys, uh, or whatever you're doing, either wood making paper, when you cut down the tree, the tree has been soaking up CO2 for its whole lifetime and creating a carbon sink in, in the roots and the soil and stuff under the, under the tree. But when you cut the tree down, there's a certain amount of carbon that's locked into the biomass of that wood. 
um, which will remain uh, locked if, let's say, you're building a house with the tree from that wood. The wood, the house will be like storing that carbon, keeping it out of the atmosphere. And that's a good thing. But all the CO2 that had been collected underground in the roots and whatnot of the tree, um, after the tree is cut down, the CO2 will be released again back up into the atmosphere. And that's not such a great thing. And so they can plant more trees and those trees will take many, many years to reach maturity. Bamboo, on the other hand, when you cut it down, to make, uh, if you want to build a house or make some chopsticks or make, um, bamboo towels or any of another thousand different things you can make with bamboo. Um, there's CO2, there's carbon in the biomass of the bamboo. So if you're building a bamboo structure or bamboo flooring or bamboo furniture, those different products will act as, you know, they will store that carbon in a solid state. And all the CO2 and carbon that was stored underground in the roots, instead of being released the way it is with the tree, because bamboo is a rhizomatic plant, um, it grows with rhizomes that are all connected together. So if you cut down one shoot, the plant doesn't die. It loses a shoot, but the rhizomes are where the life is. And so the, the, the lively, those lively rhizomes retain the carbon, the CO2, um, you know, it's CO2 in the atmosphere, it gets absorbed by the plant and it's stored in the plant tissue as, as carbon. So sometimes you say CO2, sometimes you say carbon, it can get confusing, but try not to get confused. The, the carbon is stored in the rhizomes, even after the comb is cut down because the plant, the organism is, is alive and well in that, in the heart, which is the underground rhizome network. And so there's lots of other poles that are growing up out of that rhizome network. So if you cut down one or two or three, or even most or all of the bamboo poles, the, the vast majority, if not all of the carbon is still held tight in that carbon sink underneath the bamboo forest there, the bamboo clump, whatever the case might be. So it's an amazing tool for carbon, re carbon sequestration. And that is what's cool about bamboo for generating oxygen and sequestering carbon and addressing climate related issues. So take that knowledge. Don't panic, breathe easy, plant bamboo and make bamboo batu your new favorite. All right. Hope you found that fascinating, informative, interesting, and entertaining. We'll see you next week. Take care.